Welcome back. Let's uh, get chatting with the management of PG Electro Plus. The stock on our radar today, the company has given us guidance for FY23 with regards to its revenue as well as uh, the overall improvement in margins as well. So let's understand the road ahead for them. We have with us Mr. Vikas Gupta. Thanks a lot, Mr. Gupta, for joining in. Uh, you know, I've uh, seen your presentation, the re revenue guidance, etc., that you've given for this year. But let's talk about the revenue itself. Uh, you know, it has been tilting or veering towards the product business, which is now about 59% of your overall revenue or 60% odd. Just wanted to understand uh, how much of that is designed by you, ODM, and uh, with the other part of your business, plastic molding, what's the margin differential between the two, uh, both your product business as well as your uh, plastic molding business? Yeah, good morning. Uh, so uh, for us, uh, the, uh, the focus has been shifting towards the product business in the last two, three years. And I think in the coming times, also the product business is something which will uh, drive the growth for us. Uh, the product business contributed, as you also told, around 60% of the sales for us. And largely, the, the almost 95% of the, uh, the product business that we do is in an ODM category where the products, and, uh, and the products are designed and developed by our team. Regarding the margin differentials, uh, as vis-a-vis -vis the plastic molding, the, the margins, I would say, will be almost similar. Like in the case of product business, we... And say around seven to eight percent, and the plastic molding also will be around seven to eight percent. But the main catch in this is the asset terms that we are able to drive through product business are much better as compared to the plastic molding business. You want to give us a number there? How, what's the difference on, on the asset turns? What is the difference since you're saying yeah. that that's the differentiating factor? So the plastic molding will give us an asset turn of around one and a half to two, whereas in case of product business, we can get an asset turns of almost five to six. Okay. All right. Oh, that's a big jump then. Uh, you know, Mr. Gupta, your stock has been buzzing around. So I wanted just to ask you some basic questions. You have given a guidance, you know, and it's uh, eye-popping that a management gives a guidance in absolute terms on the EBITDA front. Be that as it may, you have given a revenue guidance of close to 1,800 crores, EBITDA guidance of around 125 crores. Do you stick to this guidance? That's part A. And part B is you're saying you have a good order book on the product side, but you have not quantified it. I request you to quantify. So, it. yeah. So I'll tell you. Like, in, when we are given a very specific guidance uh, uh, in in our case, so we are very confident on that. Uh, just to give you an uh, uh, idea of that, we already achieved a sales of more than 500 crores in the quarter one, mm -hmm. and we are in line for achieving the sales of 1800 crores and the EBITDA uh, projection of around around 125 to 130 crores that we have given a guidance already. Mm. The order book that we have with us uh, is that, like in the case of uh, RAC business, uh, uh, we are seeing a, a very strong uh, momentum for us. Uh, the last season for AC has been very strong, and we have been able to tie over uh, two, three new large national level brands. And we are seeing that AC will be a major growth driver for us in driving our product revenue business. Similarly, in case of washing machine business also, uh, we are targeting almost more than 100% growth in our option machine uh, revenue for the current financial year as compared to the last financial year. So uh, we are doubling our capacities in washing machine. We have almost uh, doubled uh, Mr. We are Gupta? under the capex cycle. Mr. Sorry. Gupta, what yeah. is the? Uh, you could, can you quantify the order book? You know that that that's what we're, what we want to get. You have given quite an elaborate so, presentation, so we like to know a couple of numbers. Go ahead. So, so the, in case of RACs, we are confident of achieving a sales of more than 800 crores to uh, uh, 1,000 crores from uh, AC business only uh, in the current financial year. And the, in case of uh, uh, washing machine business also, we are targeting a sales of almost around 300 crores to 350 crores. The plastic molding itself will contribute almost around 400 crores. And the electronic will contribute to almost 150 to 200 crores. You so know, that's the uh, number. Okay, we get that point. Mr. Gupta, if you could give us a sense of, uh, you know, the kind of capex that you've done over the last few years has been 400 crores. This year, you're doing about 130, 140 odd crores out. And uh, you're mm -hmm. saying that uh, the product business asset turns are about five to six times. Plastic molding is just about one to two times. I was looking at the average asset turns that you've been doing over the last few years. It's not crossed two and a half times even once. Can you tell us, you know, what's the current capacity utilization you are at? You are constantly increasing your capex. So at optimum level, what is the kind of revenue you can do and by when? So please understand there is always a lag between when you do commit a capex and mm. when you are able to realize the sales from that capex. 
So there will be a lag on that. But we are confident of achieving asset turns of almost four to five in our product business in the in the in the coming financial year as well. And in the current financial year, the capex that we are commit to almost 130 crores is basically required to cover the uptick in the demand that we are seeing for the uh, for the products in uh, wash machine and air conditioners. What about what is your current capacity utilization levels, Mr. Gupta? Uh, if you could okay. tell us and and just hold on. Uh, you're also spending mm -hmm. around 100, 130, 40 crores or you know, the number that you just mentioned of CAPEX. So what is the peak level of revenue that you can achieve? And what kind of a Kegel growth are you looking at on the revenue aspect for the next few years? Because now you're set, you know, you're locked in and you can smash it out of the park if you get orders. So what kind of a revenue guidance can you give? Go ahead. So, uh, for the revenue guidance, we are trying to look at the uh, uh, growth of almost 25 to 30 percent CAGR for next three to four years' time. And uh, with the current CAPEX that we are doing, uh, we will be able to have a peak capacity of almost around uh, 1.5 million sets of uh, uh, indoor units and around 1 million sets of outdoor units. And in case of washing machines, we should have a capacity of almost around uh, 1 million units in washing machines. So current capacity utilization, when we talk about in case of washing machines, we should be able to achieve a 70 to 80 percent of the uh, capacity utilization uh, in coming two to three quarters. In case of air conditioners, because the AC business is very seasonal, we should be able to achieve a, a capacity utilization on annualized basis of almost around 60 to 70 percent. Right. But whereas in case of the peak, during the peak months, the capacity utilization is more than 100 percent. Right. So, you know, I am uh, just doing some math out here. You say that you can grow at about 25% uh, CAGR for the next uh, three to four years. 25% CAGR over 1800 crore, the guidance that you've given, would imply that you come to about 35 to 3600 crores over the next three to four years. Is that math correct? And this yes, is without definitely. any further capex. So definitely this is right, because if you see, we have already committed like we are already a uh, participant in the ACPLI scheme, hmm. where we are committed to achieve a sales of incremental sales of 1500 crores in the period of five years. And hmm. please understand this 1500 crore sales is in the terms of the components for air conditioners. When we talk about the complete product, definitely this sales will be more than 3000 crores in AC alone in next four to five, in, in next three to four years time that we'll be targeting to achieve. You'll be doubling your revenues by FY26. Is that correct? Yes. FY26 and these margins of around 7%, it will be in that vicinity because as you said, ODM is a larger proportion. So that's why your margins are better than peers. Yes, definitely. Mr. Gupta, you know, final couple of questions mm. before we let you go. The stock price has seen a big run, but the DII, that's the domestic institutional participation, is not a lot. Have you been getting inquiries or is it largely H&I driven? So basically, this is something that uh, we are in discussions, but I cannot uh, divulge the details right now. So it, uh, we are already. But no, you, the reason I ask you, the reason I ask you, Mr. Gupta, is because word of mouth, you know, all sorts of other uh, news rumors, we get it. But you'll be getting the bank post, right, every week. So uh, are you observing some institutions' names coming in there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay. so some institution investors started coming in, and we are seeing a keen interest from uh, quite. Yes. We'll you have know, to wait by for the September disclosure then. We will await that. Uh, and, you know, just uh, another sure. follow-up to that. You, uh, perhaps the reason why a lot of DIIs would have stayed away also could be because of the 2017 order that came in from uh, the SEBI. And I'm quoting from that order, which said that the preliminary investigation revealed that proceeds of the IPO were transferred to various entities with a likely purpose. And here I'm quoting the report, siphoning off and or diversion of those funds. Could you give us a sense of what you are doing in terms of corrective measures to that and what are you doing to you know, improve the confidence of shareholders? I think uh, you have done, you know, like the, the work done by your side is not uh, complete. I think there is already a SAT SAT tribunal order that has already come out right. where they have already uh, you know, uh, uh, cleared our name in that. So all those uh, uh, charges which were put by SEBI were set aside by the SAT order. Mm. And that order came in the year of 2019. Okay. All right. So you're saying all that, you know, any kind of pending investigation has been put to rest. Yes. Okay, Mr. Gupta, thanks so much for joining in. You have given us some big, big numbers. We look forward to chatting up with you soon. And uh, we'll do a bit of a review at that point sure. of time, uh, you know, as you go ahead and, uh, you know, try to double your revenues in the next three to around four years. It's been good speaking to you. Sure.
Well, time to slip Thank into you so much. time to slip into a short break with news that the Nifty has moved to the low point of the day. You come back, focus on markets and stock specific action.